This is the Nautilus Scrubber Sweeper Operator Training Video. This machine is the Nautilus High Dump, capable of dumping into any 60 inch dumpster. This is the Nautilus Manual Dump Machine. And you simply empty two ergonomic trays into any standard dumpster. Both the Nautilus manual dump and high dump utilize the cylindrical scrubbing sweeping method. You have two hydraulically driven scrub brushes. The front brush is turning counterclockwise catching debris and throwing it into the path of the second brush which is turning clockwise carrying debris over and into your debris hopper. The debris hopper catches the trash, the water siphons through to the bottom and then is evacuated from this hopper. Materials that it will not sweep are shrink wrap, banding, and large skid boards. Those should be picked up and not swept or scrubbed. Smaller pallet chips and smaller debris are fine to be swept with this machine. The operator control panel on the Nautilus high dump. To start the machine, simply turn the key switch to the on position. Always start the machine in the turtle or idle position with the switch down. To operate the machine in full sweep scrub motion, simply flip the switch to the rabbit position. To shut the machine off, you always want to idle the machine back down to the turtle position by rockering the switch back to the turtle position. Then you can turn the machine off by turning the key back to the left. You can warn oncoming traffic. You're entering an aisle by simply pressing the horn switch above the key. The directional pedal to go forward, simply press your foot in the forward position to send the machine forward. To re go in reverse, simply rock your heel backward to get the machine to travel in reverse. To brake the machine, simply depress the parking brake. To lock the parking brake or engage the parking brake, press your toe down to lock the machine into park. The proper way to start the machine is to have your foot placed on the brake. Then you can start the machine. If your foot is on the foot pedal when you're trying to start the machine, it will not allow the engine to crank. We are now looking at the operator's control panel for the Nautilus high dump machine. The green master switch turns all functions on and off. By simply rockering the switch from the zero position to the one position. You can set or select what functions you would like turned on and off with the master switch by selecting the squeegee brushes brush pressure, and water flow. You would rocker the switch for the squeegee downward to turn the vacuum on. You rocker the switch for the brushes downward to turn the brushes on. Then you would select your brush pressure and your water flow by dialing the dials to the selected choice. The water does have an off position a medium or normal flow and a high volume. The brush pressure you can select light, medium or high brush pressure. You simply turn all these functions on again with a master switch by rockering it to the number one position. The operator can also select which functions he would like to change while in operation mode. If the operator would like to turn off the scrub brushes and just recover water off the floor, he would simply rocker the scrub brush switch forward to turn the brushes off. The squeegee would remain on 
and now you'll be able to just dry the floor. You can also select brush pressure and change water flow while in operation mode. You do not have to stop or turn the machine off to do so. A recovery tank full light and a solution tank empty light. When the operator needs to drain the dirty water, this recovery tank light will illuminate telling the operator he needs to travel back to the dumping area to evacuate the dirty water. You also have a solution light that will be illuminated when your solution is almost completely empty. We are now looking at the operator warning lights for the engine. If any of these lights are illuminated during operation for longer than a few seconds, turn the machine off and contact your maintenance supervisor. To the left, you will notice the optional LP gas low indicator light. This light will be illuminated when the bottle is near empty. This is an optional item. The Nautilus offers a tilt wheel steering as standard equipment. The operator simply releases the lever, places the steering wheel in the most ergonomic position and relocks the lever. The Nautilus machines are equipped with head and tail lights standard. Simply rocker the switch forward to turn the lights on, rocker them backwards, turning them off. Nautilus has a standard hour meter on the left hand side of the operator's compartment. We are now looking at the Nautilus High Dump dumping controls. The first step is to raise the squeegee. The second step is to raise the debris hopper. Third step is to dump, open the door and dump the debris. You can raise the squeegee and the hopper together simultaneously by depressing both switches at the same time raising them up and over your dumpster and then opening the door to dump the trash. To lower the hopper and the squeegee you can press both switches at the same time to lower the hopper and lock it into place. We're now going to go through the dump process for the manual dump Nautilus. We're going to extend the bumper raise arm first then we are going to push down on the bumper latch allowing the bumper to be released and raised. There's a safety latch that will engage when the bumper is raised to the, the raised height. This will allow you now to access the collection hopper underneath the machine. Simply grab the, the orange arm, pull back towards you. The hopper drops back down to the four casters, allowing you to access the debris trays. We have two debris trays which ergonomically splits the debris load into two so you can easily deposit the trash in any dumpster or trash receptacle. Simply put the trays back into place, maneuver the entire hopper in between the wheel wells in the back of the machine, and then when you reclose the squeegee bumper, it's going to load the hopper back into place for you. The biggest thing is you have to get it in between the wheel wells. between the wheel wells, and you simply release the hopper safety arm, push down, gently bumping the hopper into place, close the bumper until it's latched. Now you've relocated the bumper in place. Here's the manual dumping process. Simply lift the hopper out with the ergonomic handle, deposit it into any trash can.
Looking at the solution and recovery tanks on the Nautilus machine, the orange tank and lid are for filling with clean solution and chemical. Simply lift the lid, deposit the hose or filling station into this to deliver clean and chemical water. The rear of the machine or the gray tanks and gray lids are for recovery from dirty water. Simply open the lid up, drop your hose down and wash the tanks clean from debris and sediment. Again, the orange tank is the solution tank, gray tanks are recovery tanks. In the rear of the machine we have the solution drain hose, the recovery drain hose for the dirty water to be emptied from the machine and the actual recovery line from the squeegee to the tank. So this is your solution drain hose. Simply lift it off, unscrew the plug, you can drain all the clean water out of the machine. Then we have the recovery drain. Simply lay the hose down, open the gate valve, which will allow the dirty water to flow from the machine. Then the operator can open the recovery tank lids on top of the machine, take the garden hose, and rinse the dirty water down and out of the drain. We also have access to the recovery hose that goes down to your squeegee, which also can be washed out with your garden hose down and all the way out the bottom of the machine. By lifting the hopper and up and out of the way, we access our recovery drain cap for washing out sediment from the bottom of the tank. Simply remove the cap. This will allow the operator to wash the debris from out of the top of the tank and out of the bottom. The recovery cap has a gasket inside to seal the tank so it will not leak. It has to be placed back in like this so that it will seal the tank when putting it back on the machine. When the hopper and the squeegee are in the lifted position, we have two safety pins, one located on each side that can be put into place so that you can maneuver underneath the lifted hopper and squeegee safely. Simply lift this clip out of its retainer and engage into the hole above. One on each side will protect you while underneath the machine. We now have the machine in the high dump position to show access to the internal hopper for cleaning purposes. Very simply squeeze these together, releases the access door. There's a vacuum line inside the hopper connected to the debris screen. The debris screen is simply removed by pulling the cotter pin, removing it out the access door. The operator can now wash this off, making it free from debris so that we can now evacuate the water from the hopper efficiently. All the sediment that's in the hopper, stuck in the bottom of the hopper, is simply washed out the bottom of the dump door here down into your dumpster or trash container. We're now going to raise the squeegee into the maintenance position so that we can observe the squeegee edge and rotate or flip the squeegee to a new wiping edge. To remove the squeegee, simply press down on the latch, release it, take the shorter piece from behind the holding mechanism here, then you can lift off the entire band clamp itself, allowing you to take the squeegee off of the mounting tool, flip the squeegee in for end, which will allow you to have a completely new wiping edge on the floor. You can also flip the squeegee top for bottom which gives you a new set of two wiping edges, the inner and the outer. So you mount the squeegee back on the, the squeegee tool itself, 
Then you put back on the band clamps. Locking the latch back in place. To access the brush deck, you simply lift up the side panel, which it shows you the latch to release the door. Simply lift up on the latch, swing the stainless steel door open. Um, you have the brush door that holds the brush in place. Simply pull off the door. There's no screws or handles. Then the brush simply slides out from under the machine. To reinstall the scrub brush, simply slide it back underneath the machine till it rests against the hydraulic motor on the other side of the machine. Then put your foot inside the core of the broom, press down, the, the core will slide onto the hydraulic motor on the other side and the keyway simply will load when you turn the brush to your left. When the brush is loaded onto the motor on the other side there will be clearance underneath the brush it will stand up on its own then you're going to reinstall the brush door onto the keyways on either side of the brush deck this will hold the door in place when you close the brush door it will hold the entire plate into place Before beginning operation of the equipment, the operator will make one visual inspection of the machine before beginning operation. The operator will check the radiator to make sure it's free of any type of debris or trash, banding, uh, shrink wrap, cardboard, things of that nature. The engine will need to be also free of any kind of debris or trash. The operator needs to check the scrub brushes to make sure there are no banding or shrink wrap wrapped around the brushes. If necessary, the brush will need to be removed from under the machine and the banding or shrink wrap cut free. Continuing the operator inspection, we'll need to make sure that the tanks have been drained free of dirty water and the squeegee is checked to be free of any kind of clog or material blocking the passageway into the recovery tank. We're now going to show you how to check the oil level on the Nautilus machine. Simply open up the side panel and the top panel. The oil dipstick is located right on the front side of the engine. Simply remove the dipstick, check the oil indication, make sure that it is at the appropriate level on the dipstick, replace back in the machine. We're now going to show you how to maintain the air cleaner. The operator would simply squeeze together the dust cap. If any dust falls freely out of this cap, then you will need to shake the cap clean by removing the clamps on each side. Take the dust cap, tap it clean, replace it. One of the daily checks for the operators is to look at the hydraulic reservoir, making sure it has sufficient oil. There are two quick check ports on the front of the seat. There's a sight gauge that shows you how much oil is in the, the hydraulic reservoir. As long as the sight gauge has oil more than halfway through the gauge, it should be service in good service order. There is also a flow meter on the hydraulic filter. If the needle is indicating in the red, then the hydraulic oil filter needs to be changed. Both of these sight gauges are on the front side of the operator seat clip. You can also do a thorough check of the reservoir with the dipstick located on top of the hydraulic tank underneath the seat and side door. To access the hydraulic reservoir simply open the side door, raise the seat clip, Now you can open the hydraulic tank and view the dipstick and the fluid level. The level should be in between 
the two indicators. The machine does not take a standard hydraulic oil. It takes a DTE-10 XL32 hydraulic oil. It's a thicker oil, standard forklift hydraulic oil will not work in this machine.